Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Hello and welcome to the show. Uh, we've got a great episode for you today. My friends Mauricio Ramos and Adrian Salazar join us right here in the studio. I love having guests that come sit down. We actually set up for two guests uh, and we had a great time. These guys are really at a special point in the trajectory of their business. They run a company called 210 Management. I've been friends and, and business partners with them for, for many years now. Um, but they started out they ended actually were working together, met, became business partners, did a lot of smaller real estate stuff, and now are closing, uh, you know, 300 units that we talk about. They just close more deals they're pursuing, and these guys just do it right, and they they are incredibly hard workers, and uh, share some of the stories there. So I love these guys. I think you're going to enjoy this in studio podcast. So if you got the opportunity to watch the video on YouTube or, or our website, check that out. Before we dive in with these gentlemen. Uh, if you're not already an investor and seeing the DJE deals that are coming out, uh, you can go to djetexas.com, Delta Juliet Echo Texas.com, and sign up to see those forthcoming projects. We show you case studies, current portfolio, before and afters, all that fun stuff. Secondly, if you would like to be an operator and go out and buy deals and run deals and you want to scale up your business, we created apartmenteducators.com for just that. And that has been a very exciting journey the past couple of years, seeing our students go out, go through the course, the program and all the ecosystem and tools that we provide them and then go out and close their own 10 or $20 million apartment complexes. Really nothing more rewarding than having that uh, handoff and that transfer so that they can go build wealth for themselves and their families and their investors. So we've got a free video course that I teach at apartmenteducators.com if you want to check that out. All right, let's jump into the episode here with my friends Mauricio and Adrian. Here we go. Guys, welcome. Thanks for coming on the podcast. How are y'all doing? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah. If you're ticket. listening to the audio on this out there, uh, watch the video. You know, we went and got an extra mic, Adrian, just for you. Just for so we could <laughs> so we could do this podcast in the studio. Uh, so good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. And the timing of this, you know, we're talking uh, early 2022. So, you know, fresh new year here. We were just kind of talking before in the green room about you guys uh, closing a deal like a couple of days ago, you know, the last, you know, 48 hours of the of the year uh, and some cliffhanger moments and stuff like that. Let's you know, I definitely want to talk about deals and especially about you guys velocity and momentum, because that's really exciting. I've known you guys for a lot of years. I've partnered with you guys on a lot of deals, invested in your deals. And we're, you know, all in San Antonio and. Uh, so there's that history there, but, um, you guys have like caught this stride on getting into the bigger stuff, which is really cool. Cause you guys started not doing that. So, um, before we get into all that, you guys have both been on the podcast before, been gracious enough to be guests, but maybe just kind of a quick intro for, for each of you guys, for the listeners and, and background Mauricio. For sure. Thank you. I, thanks again for, uh, Devin for having us. It's a, it's an honor to be here together with Adrian at Suten Management. So, uh, my name is Mauricio Ramos. I'm originally from Mexico. Came into the U.S. Uh, for to study to study civil engineer. Graduated as a civil engineer. Did ten years in construction. Along the way, met Adrian, uh, my business partner now, um, in the construction industry, and we started into doing real estate. He introduced me to real estate, and so I we started doing uh, some single family mobile homes, and started doing small multi. Bought a 16 unit, 32 unit, quit my job about the 10 year mark with a th three year overlap in the real estate industry and been doing that since 2018, uh, full time real estate investor. Yep. We're uh, a little over 500 units now. Outstanding. Own and operate, invested in over a thousand doors, uh, partner with, with you on a couple of deals. Sure. We're excited and we're just getting started. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So you guys work together, 10-year career, three-year overlap. That's that's worth mentioning. I had kind of a similar deal. It's probably a 10-year corporate career with two and a half, three years of really burning the candle at both ends. Right. I mean, you if you're going to get out of that orbit of the corporate job, it takes some gas to do it 
for sure. But she did it. 100%. And then, um, well, I want to get into that a little bit more. But Adrian, how about a little little background for sure. the for yeah. the folks here? So, um, started off in real estate in 2014. Um, I got introduced to like a meetup, a Robert Kiyosaki Rich Dad Poor Dad event that was happening in San Antonio. Yep. And uh, I thought he was going to be here, so I knew who he was early on. I did yeah. a lot of personal development, other companies I was a part of, and so I attended this event. And um, you know, sure enough, Robert Kiyosaki was not there. It was one they of had a, they had a poster of him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All they were talking about was pre foreclosures, flipping houses, wholesaling, you know, finding you know properties on you know pre foreclosure things like that. And you know, I got open to that concept very early on, 2014. And uh, started shaking, you know, people's hands in the room. Got introduced to a meetup, a real estate investor club here in San Antonio, and showed up and signed up to the, you know, $150 membership for the year just to get added to the email, you know, blast and stuff. And sure, uh, I met my mentor, um, who ended up, you know, taking me under his wing and uh, started, you know, basically finding deals for them. So uh, they gave me some, you know, different ways to find deals off market, you know, with not a lot of money and not a lot of, you know effort it's it's more of you know going out and finding these off market deals finding the motivated sellers so i did that for a long time and uh we ended up doing about five six wholesales a month we were buying oh, wow. one or two houses a month yeah did and that what for period about, is this there was this was between 2014 and like 2018. okay good time to be wholesaling houses yeah, yeah. and so i picked it up pretty quick uh, I think, you know, Jonathan Bueno and a, yes. another, uh, we probably bought a bunch of stuff from you. Yeah. So, uh, I did see y'all's name a lot on my, yeah, well, that's my about the track. time we were blowing and going on single right. families. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we we're buying anything that we could get to pencil. Yeah. So, uh, did that. I got really good at it. Finding deals basically. Yeah. Um, and you know, kind of got a little tired of it. It was very transactional, you know, Absolutely. the whole selfies came, they were good, but you know, money went out just as fast as it came in. Hard business. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, started looking at other options and I kind of felt like I hit a peak. And so, um, at, you know, during the time that I was wholesaling, I uh, got an internship with a construction company and um, I ended up going to the supervisor and, you know, asking for a job to complete my internship. And, you know, sure enough, the next day he told me to show up and he, I showed up the next day and he's like, hey, go over there to the corner of the room. He's your supervisor. Ended up being Mauricio. Oh, there it is. So uh, yeah. he was the project manager for a construction site and uh, I was his now assistant prop, you know, project manager, I was his intern. And so we started working together, you know, we we're building a very big construction you know, site, uh, downtown here, San Antonio. We worked very well together. I mean, yeah. off the bat. And so, um, you know, I was already in real estate. He was, you know, trying to, you know, get involved in other things to, you know, produce money outside. And you know, he was interested, he was interested and he was, you know, hungry for other, you know, other things. And we ended up going to a meetup together and, uh, and he signed up, you know, on, on the spot for that membership. Yep. Um, and sure enough, we started partnering together after construction, you know, work, we would, you know, sit down and pull up the San Antonio map and like start targeting, sending campaigns to other owners. And we did sure. a, a couple deals. We did yes. like, you know, five houses together, I think, you know, a couple wholesale deals and, um, you know, we hit it off, we hit it off. And then, you know, he eventually kind of started, you know, sh shifting into the multifamily industry, you know, seeing the number side of things and how he could reach, you know, financial freedom a lot faster than single family. No and, doubt. um, and so he, you know, he went off and did that. I told him to go do his multifamily thing, you know, go do your apartment thing. I'll, I'm going to stay over here where I know what to do. <laughs> and, uh, you yeah. know, he came back with a couple deals he closed. And I mean, I would have had to close probably, you know, 40 houses to get, you know, that amount of you know profit that he was sure. making. So I was like, you know what? Peace out. I'm done with single family. And yep. I, did, I went full on multifamily. We started, you know, just shifting our focus from single family to multi. And I mean, sure enough, we, he, you know, we bought that nine unit, you know, started renovating it, went really well for us. 16 unit came right after we wholesaled a couple apartment complexes, I think, you know, four or five, you know, made really good you know, money on them. And then yep. we just, you know, one of them came across and was like, Hey, let's buy it. And so that was a 16 unit. And then six months after 32 unit, you know, a nine unit, an 88, a 42. And so it's just kind of started gradually increasing from there. And now we operate 500 apartments. That's yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, you, you kind of have to be converted to the multifamily. Everybody kind of inherently understands single family. They get the numbers, not a ton of capital to get involved or no capital if you're doing wholesaling and it's a way to kind of bootstrap into it. But at some point in our journey, we kind of see the light on the multifamily. Maybe it's a check or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but uh uh, I love it, man. And now you guys, uh, I want to get to the deal you just closed in a minute, but I want to touch on Mauricio. You talked about that kind of three year overlap period. I think there are some people that, you know, people listening might be passive investors or prospective passive investors trying to learn about the business, but there's definitely also somebody listening right now that wants to do what you guys do. They've got the job, 
and maybe they've done well for themselves, but that's a big leap. Talk to me about that, that three year period where you're doing both. Did you have the end in mind to quit? Were you just trying to do deal by deal as good as you can? What was that period like for you? For sure. And very interesting. So I started when I was, when I was working, I started traveling. Now I've been to 26 countries, but I started traveling, went to Europe, met a lot of people. And then when I came back, this is just for pleasure, just, just traveling, pleasure, just to do right. it. Yeah. yeah actually I got to a, a weird season of my life where I quit my job and went traveling for like okay. six months. Right. Nice. Just, yeah. I was kind of like tired of, you know, just working and being an employee. And then I realized that, okay, I have to go back. I can like, this is not sustainable, right? I have to go back and work. Right. But I said, there has to be another way. I, people, I met a lot of people traveling that have been traveling for a year, six months. And I was like, okay, there's no way that these people go to work for a year or two years and then go on vacation, then come back and do it again. There has right. to be another way. That's right. right. And so I started looking and first I saw, uh, uh, day trading and I thought that was it. Right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is still exchanging time for money. Right. right. And that's, that's when I, w I, I knew there had to be another, there has to be another way. Uh, and I knew I wanted out. I knew I didn't want to be an employee, but I didn't know what was the vehicle to get there. Yep. And then Adrian came in and then Adrian said, do you know real estate? And I was like, eh, no, I've never done real estate. Right. And, and I think he suggested reach that for that. And I knew, I knew about the book, but I uh, never read it. And I, I read it and boom, you know, that was it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Read it and then started reading other books, richest man in Babylon. Um, uh, cash flow quadrant and just other books and it just boom it, it it blew my mind and i okay this is it real estate this is this right. is gonna be it and first i thought um buy and hold single families were gonna be the sure the way to not go, a bad right? strategy right, right? depending yeah. on your goals but then then i i it got to a point where i started listening to a podcast with some multifamily guys and i was like that's right. You know, how, how long is it going to take me to buy 10, 20 houses, right? When I can buy a 10 unit apartment, 20 unit apartment and do it much faster. Right. And sure enough, I dropped all of my drop all while working full-time job. Uh, I was still single, but uh, full-time job and dropped all my single family stuff by marketing and then went full on multifamily. And then right. sure enough, I started sending po postcards to, to small multi in, in and around San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, the phone started ringing. And I bought a 10 unit apartment complex in Pleasanton, south side of San Antonio. Um, then wholesaled an eight unit. Was the 10 you held on to, right? Yes. The, yeah. It's a little it. bit of a hike down to Pleasanton. And, yeah, and, like 45 minute drive for yeah. me. Uh, and. I had built a hotel in Pleasanton before. So for me, I was kind of uh, okay. familiar with the I town. I wondered about that. Like, why Pleasanton? Because it's not a big market. It's like 8,000 people or something, right? During my first job when I came to San Antonio f as an engineer and mm -hmm. to, uh, as a project manager mm -hmm. was to build a hotel in Pleasanton. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, during the, during, there was one of, it was one of the hypes of the Eagle oil. Eagleford Shale. The, right. Yeah. So we built one of those and I just became familiar with the town. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, I already know the town, right? Why not? Yeah, because it doesn't seem like a place you would pick on a map and go, that's where I'm going to invest. 100%. But, but if he hit a home run on that deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good deal. Bought it. I, you know, of course, I leveraged all my construction background and experience managing contractors to remodel the thing. Sure. Right. Remodeled it. Uh, also wholesale a 24 unit apartment complex to uh, uh, mutual friend of ours. Yeah, a friend that's of ours right here. So, which by the, have you seen that thing now? No, not lately. I but gotta, it's, when it's we great. wrap up, I'll show you some yeah. video. Yeah, it's please. crazy. Please. Yeah. And I, I know they're, they're doing great work. You know, Jake's a great guy. Yep. And, and, uh, that allowed me, that was a six figure fee for me. So that allowed me to say, all right, I think I have a good cushion to let go of my job. Now right. I don't need it. I can continue and put all my energy and time into multi and that's what I did. Right. That's what I did. So it took three years, took a lot of time, you know, a lot of waking up early, staying late, doing both things, sometimes at work, being able to, you know, answering phone calls from sure. leads in, Hey, I'll come back. I need to go see a property, you know, a little bit of that. And, yep. and my job kind of was a little flexible being, uh, the project manager of a job site. Sure. 
but it took all that time and energy and finally I was able to to quit put all put all my focus into multi and that's when we were buying already that 16 unit and then hit it off hit it off after that so it's possible you just have to really put in the time right uh, and have a determination of of this is what I want to do find a vehicle and you know be consistent on it yeah I love it I mean those are, that's simple which is true doesn't mean it's easy but mm -hmm. that that is really it that that's 100% what happened to me it was the vision first of there's got to be a way to separate my time from my earning I don't know what it's going to be this is years and years ago but then Find, you know, it was that vision first and then, oh, real estate's going to be the vehicle and then going all in and saying, this is a decision, no matter how long it takes or whatever, uh, almost like a marriage, you know, it's like, well, I'm getting into this thing and I'm not getting out, <laughs> whether it gets hard or whatever, you know. And it's also a little bit of seeing what you don't want to become. So, 100%. Uh, yeah, at, I call at, them anti-heroes, right. like I, I, people at, you don't want to turn into. Right. At work, I met... Yeah, great guys, but these guys have they were in their fifties and sixties and they had been in the construction industry for forty years. Sure. Right? I mean, there was one of my supervisors, he graduated high school on a Friday, he started working on a job site on a Monday, and he's been in the construction Still there. industry since ever since. Yep. And I, I was like, I don't wanna become that. That's what I don't wanna do. So yep. how do I get away from that? Because I don't want to be, I love it. I love construction. It's, it's a very rewarding industry, very well paid, but very demanding. It's like, yep. this is not what I want for the rest of my life. Right. So I, I need a way out. So it took me a few years and thank God and take agent, but found the way out. The, <laughs> that, that, that beginning part is the toughest. Like no once you, once you know that there's a way out and you're aware of that. Now that whole like process in between until you know now where it's just on autopilot where we're you know buying hundreds of apartments now like yeah that 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 part is the most challenging part you have to get through yeah and and i noticed you know especially with mauricio you know and 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 us of course in the construction industry it was it was intense i mean it was intense we had to you know know everything about the job site there was a lot of problems a lot of challenges we had to overcome on the job site we had to be there early stay there late but you know, we still had that end goal in mind, and we would get back from the job site, and we would pull up the map, and we would go out and you know start knocking on doors, and we would start cold calling, and we would Love start it. you know sending cars out because you know time is limited, especially when you have a you know full time job. So no doubt. We were you know basically squeezing our days to make this happen, and you know sure enough, here we are. Yeah, I love it. It's amazing when you have you know a a dream and a burning desire, how much time and money you can find. You know, it's like. You stop watching TV shows. You you get rid of all the frivolous stuff. I haven't you know watched news or anything in a hundred years. Just it's all it's either like for me downtime, family time, or business time. Right. And it's like nothing else. Yeah. You know, I'm either resting and enjoying life, or I'm advancing the cause. And it's when you really start looking at that. I don't know how many Starbucks closings I did where the title person would meet me yeah. at the Starbucks next to my work, and we buy a house real quick, sell a house, get back to work. Um, so I, lo I love those stories and it takes, you know, it's also kind of that entrepreneurial test, sure. right? If you can make it through those first couple of years, now you're on the other side of it and then boom, like you guys are doing, getting into these big deals. Let's talk about this latest deal that you guys closed like at the very tail end of December, pair of deals actually. Um, man, how did, how did it start? How'd you find them? What did it look like? What, let's go through all of it, right? Capital stack, how you got the lender, the investors, found the project, all the way, all, th all the way through to close. What did that look like for you guys on on this last project? Sure. So um, the way I'll, I'll talk about, you know, the, from finding it, right, from the lead yep. gen part, yep. uh, which is you know what people, some people like to hear. Sure. Um, you know, I have a couple guys that constantly reach out to me to learn, and they want to come and you know find deals and you know do some marketing. And so I put together a little you know system, you know, marketing system to find some off market deals. And um, uh, one of our you know now he works with us. He came up to me and he you know started doing some marketing. He sent out sent out an email blast. Uh, yep. So we basically skip traced a bunch of you know properties and sent out you know mass email blast. Yep. And the owner responded. Uh, saying, you know, he, he might be interested if we can get him X amount per door, right? So um, then he passed it to me. And at the time, it was just like, you know, bizarre the amount that he wanted per door compared to what we have bought in that local market. So it was just kind of like, I thought, I didn't think it was very hot lead. It was like a go away number, right? Yeah, like yeah. a go away number. And then, um, you know, 
I talked to him on the phone for a good hour and a half, basically told him what we do, that we're local and, you know, we're probably the best buyers for the property. I was, you know, basically selling him on, we're the best buyers for that property. Right. And I know the property I've, you know, grew up in that area. So I was, yeah. So you talking. got him on the phone, just like cold call, skip trace. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cold How do you take that trace. call? Uh, a little surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to sure. fight for deals nowadays, you know? Totally. So, yeah. And so I did what I could. And, you know, he basically set me up with an appointment with a property manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, that same day, I went to go tour the property and got like a couple, you know, got inside a couple of units. And I mean, I already know the property. I already know the location. I didn't need to know anymore. Right. I just needed the numbers. So he literally sent the numbers the next day. So he had them all like already ready. So he was probably going to start like going out to brokers and shopping it around. Yep. So I basically beat him a little bit before, you know, he shopped it around and yep. sent, him, sent Mauricio the numbers because he's uh, my. Uh, my, my awesome partner who handles that side of the business. Gotcha. And uh, he called me one day and he was like, dude, they work like these, like, let's buy it. Like they work. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't ask any questions. I turned around, called the owner back, said, Hey, it works. Let's do it. Drafted it up at LOI, sent it to him. He signed it. And then um, it was, you know, then we started initiating the, the PSA. So we got with mm -hmm, our legal team mm -hmm. and, you know, we paid X amount of money to start and they started doing the PSA, you know, 80 page document or something. I mean, it was crazy. Did you guys originate the, the PSA, the yeah. purchase sale agreement? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so he was, he was ready. Like he was just, you know, I signed that, he signed the LOI and he was ready. Yeah. And, um, and he so, just caught him at the right time, huh? I mean, he's about to go to market with it and yep, yep. got to his number. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and so we sent him the PSA, he sent it to his attorney editing, sent it back, sent it to us editing, editing. And it was like a two week period from the time he signed the LOI to the PSA, like two week period. And then um, he called me all of a sudden one day and he's like, hey, Adrian, I ended up having another buyer and, um, you know, they, they're going to pay a million more. And um, and I mean, we had already like like squeezed, you know, I mean, we I mean, pushing it to make it work. I mean, right. Yeah. 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 The occupancies were not very well. I mean, it was, you know, mom and pop operated. I yeah. Just completely, you know, not a, the best stable looking property at the time. Um, and so, you know, we. I was just like, I'm sorry, I can't do a million more. Like, there's no way. And yeah. uh, he's like, well, you know, I have a fiduciary responsibility to my investors to, you know, get the sure. amount of money for the properties. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I tried, I tried, I tried over the phone and he's just, sorry, Adrian, I ended up being like, all right, look, I'll sleep on it, but tomorrow, 10 a.m., I'm gonna sign, you know, a contract with the other buyer. I'm pretty much 90% sure I'm gonna sign the contract with the other buyer. And so, um, so I mean I was I was pissed off myself. Yeah. I, like I can't take no for an answer. So uh, I got on a plane. I booked a flight, <laughs> which uh, is your, which is in your playbook at this point, <laughs> right? We you got some history with this move. So I was in McAllen, and it was probably you know 11, 11 o'clock uh, at night, and, yep. and uh, I booked a flight from San Antonio to California because we skip traced him, found his address. Yeah, you know California, his home address. <clears throat> I and, didn't realize uh, you guys did this one on the on this project. Okay, and so. Um, so got his address and then I booked the flight from, from San Antonio to California. And the flight from San Antonio was leaving at six in the morning and I was gonna get to California by like 8.30 in the morning because of that time. two hour yeah. difference. Yeah. So it was right. a perfect flight, I booked it. Yep. So I didn't sleep, I drove straight from McAllen to San Antonio overnight, right. night, 12 to four in the morning, got there, waited a little bit in the airport. I mean, you know, didn't eat, didn't, I mean, I was, I was just, I had one goal and yeah, you know, that was machine it. mode. And he was already <laughs> going to sign the contract the next day. So I had to get there before. So I got there, rented a car and I was, I mean, I was exhausted. I was hungry. I was going to go eat and I was going to go like get a little nap in before I went to his house. Something in my head was just telling me like, no, go. you got to go, 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 go. And uh, I, I remember I was literally filling up the gas tank in my car and I didn't even let it fill up all the way. And I was, just, I just closed the door and I got, I went straight to his house, got yeah. off rang the doorbell and he opened the door and I was like, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey um, it's me again. And he's like, yeah, who are you? And I was like, it's Adrian. And he's like, I was like, yeah, yeah, it's me. And he's like, what? Like, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? Like, and it's like 9 a.m. It's like 9 30 in the morning. Yeah. I beat him. Like he, he said he was going to do. He's allegedly about to ink the other deal. Mm. So, um, oh my God. and you didn't see the other buyer on the doorstep there, right? Yeah. I was, I was like hallucinating, <laughs> like picturing the guy, other guy walking out of the property with a contract, <laughs> waving it in my face. Like I was just kind of challenging myself. Yeah. Right. I love sure it. I, can. I love it. So I go in and, you know, sit in his living room and I'm like, I'm in, like, I'm in. I, I think I even sent him a picture or something yep. like on Instagram and like, I'm in, I'm inside. This is it. Like I'm not leaving without a contract. Like I'm not. You're and in this man's house. I'm in this, yeah. I'm in this house, a multi-million dollar house. Nice house. Across yeah. the street from Calabasas. So, I mean, it's a yeah. nice area. Very nice area. Yeah. Um, 
And so he was like, I mean, tell me, like, are you going to pay the million more? I mean, you know, I, are you going to, what are you, what are you going to do? And so I was like, I mean, I, we can't, like, there's no way. And, yeah. and so I was, you know, trying, he was asking me like who you are, what you do. So rapport building, like complete rapport building for, you know, the first couple hours. And then, um, he gave me some ch a time call Mauricio. I called Mauricio. I was like, Hey, look, you know, he's not budging on his million. We got to make it work. And yeah, I think he just ran some quick, you know, numbers and he said, dude, it, it's going to work. Let's, let's make it happen. So I went ahead and told him, let's do it. And, uh, add his million add it. Yeah. Yeah. We added the million. Yep. Um, and in a market like this, I mean, we'll, we'll make it back. I mean, we were going to make it back anyway. So, um, his wife came out, I talked to his wife and she was getting to know me. And, um, and he like, basically the wife told the owner, like, let's, let's just do it. Poor kid. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's on he our doorstep. He, he wouldn't be here. Cause he, that, another thing was like, dude, you look young. Like, are you yeah. sure you're gonna be able to close, you know, a right. over $20 million deal? Sure. I was, sure. Yes. Like I'm, I'm ready to go hard right now. And you know, some earnest money, like I wouldn't be here right now if I wasn't serious. Right. So long story short, uh, went to his office um, and he printed the contract from his office and he signed the contract and I walked out of his house with a contract, yep. called Mauricio and it looks like we're gonna be buying 300 apartments, uh, more than doubling our portfolio. In one and, transaction. Um, in one transaction yep. and uh, yeah, I mean, then basically, you know, we got under contract, it was a you know, good win for us, but we're just getting started. I mean, that's only the right. beginning. That's only right. the beginning. And so uh, got back from California to McAllen to start the inspection. You know, I think I even told them like, I only need five days of feasibility. Like nice. I, already, I already know the property. Familiar with the asset market. And I think yeah. the other buyers were offering like 45 days of feasibility or something like that. Uh, that's, like, yeah. I, I only need five days. Like that's it. I just need to go inside some apartments. That's all I need to know. So we yep. started the inspection the next day, you know, the next week. And we walked every single apartment, 279 apartments, two, between two and a half days. And uh, we did our thing, lease audits, everything. I mean, we got, we started, you know, communications with the lender and we started, you know, raising some money uh, and it was a process. I mean, it was a process. We ended up having to get an extension. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, you know, it was a $8 million raise. Um, and I mean, the last raise we did was like 2.3 million. Wow. So, I mean, yeah. It was huge jump. Quadruple. Yep. Size. So we had to make sure that we were calling everyone we knew. And yep. I mean, we were constantly you know on calls every other day where me and him were talking like who's you know who are we going to put in this deal who else who else who else is bringing money i mean thinking just outside of the box because we had to do this deal that's right and so uh yeah you're I mean, too far in at this point you yeah, yeah. worked your tail off to get it in contract hard earnest money yeah you just got to make it happen and another thing that happened that was interesting that kind of similar to the you know the 88 unit we bought um there was no management there was no management in place i mean the management team quit the you know maintenance guys quit so nobody you know, on site I mean, there was a 143 unit apartment comp. There's 143 and 136. The 143 had no operations. Right. I mean, you know, people were taking advantage of no one coming out and supervising on the property. I falling, mean, it was falling, apart, it was falling yeah. completely apart. It was, you know, was the guy collecting 20... any rent? I mean, yes. And they've owned this property for like 20 years. So, I mean, His he was, is he was so making low. money. So, yeah. so he, all he cared was that, that cash flow coming in. Yeah. He would yeah, see the property, it. you know, three or four times a year and. Yeah. So, so yeah, the operational side was, was pretty efficient. So I right. told him, I told him we'll manage it. Like we're going to manage it for you just, you know, throughout we, the time we close, like we'll help you, right. you know, get inside the apartments and knock on the doors to do our lease audit. I mean, to do everything that we need to do, like, because do it for you. He, he was like, oh, I don't have a team, you know, it's super, she was super stressed out, but the whole thing is to, you know, deliver a solution, you know, to so, the seller. Yeah. So I, you know, we went in there, we brought our handyman, we brought our team, our leasing agents, you know, I, you know, we came up with an agreement with the owner to completely run it until we closed. And so we took over the property before we even completely closed yeah. on it. So we problems. even got, you know, aware of the property. We know where all the systems are now. I mean, even before closing. So it was cool. It was fun. It was challenging because we yeah. also have our own properties to run. Sure. But, you know, we were willing to do this. And yeah. at the same time, we, we were able to fix a, a lot of the issues on the property with his money. Right. Bef on, out of their right. budget. Right. 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 I like that. That's a, that's a rare, if ever, do you get the opportunity to yeah. take over before close? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got the chance to, to go in there, start managing right. uh, the contractors, repairing a few units. There's a lot of issues with ACs. So we brought our AC guy and repaired a lot of the AC units. Sure. Uh, did our due diligence inspection, uh, appraisal and everything. There's a few things wrong with the appraisal. So we were able to fix them. We basically probably... 90% of the units were missing uh, smoke alarms. Oh my gosh. Same, and fire extinguishers. And fire yeah. extinguishers. So, the basics. So we, we got him to, to okay. do all that. So yeah. we were able to 
uh, overcome a lot of the challenges and issues and efficiencies pre before takeover yeah right? and then and then he paid for it right so that was right was, he's probably yeah. grateful for you just to have somebody competent in there running it for the first time in right. many years yeah. most likely right and the, the properties are in, in great location uh, mm -hmm. in McAllen, texas um so there's just kind of diamond in the raw now i mean they were they were uh i'm missing the word here but uh neglected property they, sure they're just forgotten about nobody's taking care of them right started you know started being run down and started having bad reviews online so you know that's just a like a down the spiral. death spiral right, right. so yeah. so we were we're going to be able to turn them around location is great you know the, the bones are great we just have to bring good operations reposition the property sure uh, money i mean capital improvements right. yep. big part of big part of these projects we, we will be doing uh, a little over a million dollar worth of capex on this property excellent so yeah 179 units and a million dollar worth of the capex in about 18 months 24 months max we'll be we'll deploy the whole thing yep um dramatic uh increase in the noi this guy was not charging for any rubs right at all he, no, he's no. bearing all the utility costs yes both properties have a have a internet contract Mm -hmm. he doesn't charge any of that right. so, so huge upside right. on, on the rubs and the in the in the charging back to the residents uh some stuff a huge upside on the rents there's some units that are just huge units and he's charging very very low rent i mean some might be in the 300 gap 300 dollar gap wow. so a lot of upside just needs to be managed properly uh bring in you know do the, the remodels that we do right uh, and we're sure it's going to be a successful, successful property. Yeah, I love it. And you guys already have a footprint in that market too, which I'm sure helps. Right. Let's talk about the the management company. You know, a lot of um, all sponsors have to make that decision. Third party in house. There's pros and cons. Um, how how did you guys make that decision? And you know, how is that working for you now that you're you're at 500 doors and you know can likely double that now you're kind of on this track now of these bigger deals right you close 300 units closing the next 200 units 300 units is is uh it's not gonna be easy but you're on the track now right the, the lenders know that investors know that the market knows it that you guys are capable of closing these kind of deals so how did you what was the genesis of the property management company and you know how has that changed and and been for you as you have have scaled up into bigger projects so, so i'd say i mean it honestly was out of frustration so yes. we had when we had our 16 unit we had a third party which was charging like eight percent and then when we had the 32 unit we bought the 32 unit we wanted that same manager to manage both at a lower rate right and she wouldn't come down so we got another guy that would manage both at six percent and still kind of the same challenges that we had we had him with both uh they wouldn't lease anything uh, they wouldn't help with the remodeling. They wouldn't, it was just, they were just, uh, available to collect the rent and post some late rent notices. That was it. It's kind of they, a warm body on site. Right. They right. wouldn't, they wouldn't do anything else. So we said, all right, this is it. We're going to take over this, uh, because we were frustrated. And those are probably the two quote unquote best managers in the Valley. Uh, like third party manager, <laughs> right. everybody else manages their own. There's, there's not very many operators in, in, in McAllen, like what we do. Right. So we decided to just do our own. That's how 210 management was born. Um, <clears throat> and, and what property was that on where you guys were like, all right, we're sick of this Oak, Oak Ridge and, uh, Sonterra. Yeah, it was how big, how many units was that one? Like 50, 50 total. 50 okay. Total. Yeah. That's a good size, you know, size community. It was just a lot of, you know, a lot of just no effort on their behalf to rent apartments and lease apartments and increase the NOI and decrease the expenses. I mean, we knew what we needed to accomplish and they weren't kind of thinking the same as us. So it was just one of those times where I, I mean, I called Mauricio. I was like, yeah, no. I think he was traveling. He was yeah. traveling. He was in, I was in Israel when he Israel, Israel, made world. the decision. I was in Israel. He was frustrated and we had been talking for the last few days about right. this. 
He's like, hey, man, I hope you're enjoying your vacation. Uh, I'm over here getting my butt kicked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but I like I like it. I like yeah. the management side. I really do. I mean, and it's I, nice I, to have a partner yeah. so that you're not, I mean, you're not on 24-7, right? Yeah. You, got, you got some distribute the workload. Yeah. But And, I mean, you know, we took it over. And ever since we took it over, I mean, we were it's collecting it's rent all over the place. We are leasing apartments. I mean, you know, we're basically doing the same thing, but we're not paying 8% to somebody else. Right. Right. So, uh, and that allows us to, to bring our, you know, management fee down a little bit to, you know, buy, you know, pay more for deals or sure you know, control and control. control. Yeah. That's the, that's the name that's of the game. I and mean, we, I started our management company out of desperation, just an awful experience that, uh, you know, like a lot of us have had, and it was so bad that had to start a management company. Didn't really want to, yeah. but turned out to be an absolute blessing in disguise. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, you know, we, we love, we love the control. We love, yes. you know, we meet every week. We talk to our regional manager, you know, on every other day I show up to the offices. I, you know, walk apartments. I mean, I'm out there, you know? Right. And, um, you know, we, we, we like being able to adjust, uh, quickly. Um, yes. whenever we see things kind of, you know, getting somewhere they may not need to go or like getting to a point where like, Hey, we need to fix it now. We can fix it. Yeah. There's back. no bureaucracy approval process, third party, awesome. blah, blah, blah. Yep. Just implement Let's it. Right. It. Let's do it. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've been doing great ever since we have, you know, a whole team now we have, you know, dedicated, you know, property managers, we have leasing agents, we have, you know, contractors, handyman now that, you know, support us vendors all over the place. I right. Mean, you know, they, they have our back and we have their back as well. And I mean, it makes it much easier to run the company like that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's work. It's a lot of work to get it started. There's a lot of moving pieces, but, uh, having done both extensively, I love having a man, having the management company and the control to you guys point. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you can do it, um, let's talk about the investor side, right? So you've grown and scaled the management company, you've grown the portfolio now to 500 units and, you know, the type of deals you guys will be pursuing from here on out are not 16 doors anymore. It's more like 100, 200 doors, right? Correct. Um, so that's all scaled. What about the the equity side? How, how was that scaled for you guys? How did you start with investors and how are you now, you know, raising 8 million bucks for, for a bigger deal? Yeah, that definitely that definitely scaled as well. Right. We started the, our very first deal where we syndicate. The, the first deal I did, it was all, all my own money. The first deal right. I was Which I really love. I think, you know, it's important to do proof of concept, have success with something. Right. Uh, I totally agree with that. I was the same way. So the first deal that we brought money for, I mean, very first investor was the, the, the construction site where I was at. I was a project manager. So he was my superintendent, the guy in charge <laughs> of the field. Right. He saw what I had done through the last, you know, two, three years right. before I quit and how I was doing good. I was showing the numbers. He was like, let me know in the next one. I'm, I'm in. Love it. And he's been an investor in every single deal that we've done. That's awesome. He, those relationships are so special. You know, I, we, we all, all sponsors kind of have those early investors that helped us get off the ground and still are like, yep. I mean, they're like the, these super powerful silent partners. Yeah. That, it's I awesome. Think another thing too, that helped us is our reputation. Yeah. Like we, we had a brand in the marketplace. We would show up to the RIAs. We would, you know, do things for other people. We would sell good deals. I never, right. you know, I, I was not about the money. It was, you know, just, you know, if a seller, if I delivered to the seller or something and I delivered to the buyer or something in the beginning when I was wholesaling, right. I mean, you know, they saw me and they, you know, the reputation was there. And then me and Mauricio started attending events and we would sell deals to people. We wouldn't lie to people. We would, you know, completely be real with everybody. And that's what helped us raise the money in the very beginning right. of these apartment complexes, because some people did partner with us that didn't really know that, you know, we didn't do much in apartments before, but they knew what we did in single family yes. and in the prior stuff to, you know, follow up on that is, you know, our reputation really helped us in the beginning as well. Yeah. It's a great point. I tell, I try to tell people that are younger and interested in this stuff, like, cause I wish somebody told me this when I was younger relationships, number one, relationships, reputation, 100%. you know, you think it's about money or whatever, but it's relationships. Number one, then skills, then money. Money's like the, the last one right. still need it to, to get it done. But you know, I, I love that relationship focus and it, the guys and gals that are doing it right in the business are long-term focus. And you can see that in people when they're, when they're long-term focused sure. like that. So, sure. yeah, that helped us. So in getting back to the question about how we got to the, you know, to the 8 million, okay, that first deal was four investors. Right. We're raising $176,000. 
Right. Did you just structure a joint venture? Was that an actual like PPM and everything? That or? was a, that was that wasn't a PPM. That was just kind of like a simple, simple joint venture. Yeah, yeah. Well, gotcha. hardest thing, we, hardest thing we've ever done. It. And we just because it was new and scary, and we didn't yeah. know at, you know. at at the end, you know, <laughs> a friend of a friend kind of brought us this 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 last partner, and we pull it pull it together, pulled it through, and it was it was great. Then the thirty two unit, we brought like seven investors. Um, that was more like better set up, like full blown PPM right. syndication, everything. We raised like three hundred and also till the last day, the last yeah. week. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You're raising capital all the way up to the right to yeah. the last week, and then uh, and that then, goes. I mean, and then that's when we started getting a little bit more of the phone calls of, hey, next time you have a, you have another one, let us know. We're we're interested, right? Right. I have more investors. I mean, not necessarily chasing us, but interested in what we were doing. Right. Because we were, you know, posting on social media what we were doing and right. stuff. Meeting people in, at RIA's. We had a meetup for, for a full year, I think, in 2019. Oh, yeah. We had a we had a meetup, so that expo gave us a lot of exposure right. within San Antonio. Um, and then fast forward to this deal. I mean, we had investors. We had an investor that put in $2 million. Uh, we had... Uh, two funds that came in right um in in all kinds of investors you know multiple six figure investors uh and of course multiple 75,000 50,000 sure uh but the, the question the the conversations go a lot easier i mean is is some investors of course we know them but some investors is hey i'm in here an email here's here's the uh paperwork wires in yeah that's it. It's simple. Yep. All right. Where before it would take a full dinner or a couple of dinners yes. and everything now. So the track record and doing what we're, what we're saying we're going to do, uh, we, we've, I think also part of the success is that we've collected together. We've been able to bring our sellers back into the deals as investors, which is really unique. Yeah. That speaks, that speaks a lot to you guys kind of relationship building on these deals that your sellers come back to you as LP investors, right? Yeah, we've done it multiple times. I mean that, right. that 24 unit, that Jake's deal, mm -hmm. he's an investor. The sell the seller of that deal, he's an investor in a sure. couple of my deals. I love it. We're very good friends. Okay. So we, uh, had a great conversation with Mauricio and Adrian. We, to be very candid, ran out of disk space. So missed a few minutes of the end of the interview. And I wanted to hand off to connect with those guys, uh, which I recommend that you do. They're at 210management.com and that's T-W-O-T-E-N-M-G-M-T.com. And I'll link to it right in the show notes. So if you've got uh, pulled up on iTunes or wherever you're watching this, you can click straight through. Those guys are also on social media. Uh, if you want to find them there for some of the the rehab progress on their various projects in Texas. So uh, follow, click through and, and go check those guys out and get connected with them. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to the DJE podcast. For more information, please go to DJETexas.com.